Hello. Today we're going to go over the Cytoviva analysis tool for spectral smoothing. Uh, spectral smoothing is a function that we put into the software to smooth out the spectrum. There are three different ways to do this in the tool. There's boxcar filtering, adjacent band averaging, and savitsky golay curve fitting. All three of these essentially do the same thing. They, they smooth out the spectrum. So if there's noise in it or you just want to see a more smooth spectrum, you can apply these one of these three smoothing tools. So I have open here the 100 nanometer 60x silver data that we looked at when we did the peak location classifying webinar tutorial and so here we have some silver particles and if I bring up the spectral window here we'll see even on these bright particles if you zoom in you'll see you know there's there's some noise that's just inherent in uh, the spectrum here even though it has a great signal to noise ratio if you do desire to smooth out this uh, these spectra in this image you can do so using this tool so we'll start with the first one, which is the boxcar filtering. And whenever you open these up, you have to, of course, select what file you want to apply it to. So these are the parameters here. Uh, it shows you here the name of the image, the full image, and the number of bands. In this particular scan, there are 455 bands that we see from 400 to 999.43 nanometers. And what this does is this is going to actually smooth the data by reducing the number of bands. It's going to reduce the dimensionality of the spectral resolution. So, for example, here it defaults to 50 bands. So, if we put in 455 bands, which is the number of bands we have, we have a 2.64 nanometer resolution. So, what we can do is enter in a certain number of bands. So if we want to make it 50 bands, the spectral resolution goes down to 11.9 nanometers. So it goes from 455 bands down to 50 bands. So if I do this, I'm just going to commit this to memory. It makes a new file here. It looks just like the original. And if I link the displays, Remember, we can link the displays by right-clicking either either of the two displays. So in this case, we want to link the displays because we processed one and we want to maybe see what the exact difference is. So if I move the, the zoom windows, I'll put them down here next to each other. And we, using the arrow keys on my keyboard to go to a particular particles at the same pixel. So I'm going to show the the smoothed data here. This is the original. So we see here on the right, this is the box card data, and this is the original data. So here, it goes from 1 to 455 bands, and from here, it goes from 1 to 50 bands. But we see the spectral resolution here. Band 1 is at 405. Band 2 is at 416, so it's about 11 nanometers, which is what the spectral resolution said when we entered in 50 bands. So this naturally smooths the data, and we can see this here. So I'll close this. Now the next spectral smoothing feature is adjacent band averaging. So again, we, we highlight the, the data we want to work with. And what this does is this does not change the number of bands. Boxcar averaging is the only tool out of the three that changes their spectral resolution. Uh, it can make it multispectral. You know, you could take it down to just 10 bands and, and you know, your data would look very, uh, very low resolution because it would be. So on the spectral adjacent band averaging smoothing feature, you select the number of bands at which you want 
the each band to be averaged by. So in other words, what this is doing here is it's a moving average, just like it says. So the more bands that you choose, the more smoothing you have. So and it must be odd because there's a center band and then there's an equal number of bands to the left and right. So for smoothing width of five, it would be the center band and then two to the left and two to the right. And it does this throughout the whole spectrum. So it kind of averages, it's a moving average. So if I, let's just say we go with five here. Let's just enter in three actually. And we do this to memory, just so we can see. Changing this to linear just to make it look more contrasted. And again, if we link these displays, go to the same, same pixel where there's some data here. We show the spectrum here. We show the spectrum here. Now these might not look that much different because we're really only averaged one band to either side, but you see if we zoom in, this is a lot smoother than than this. So even just a little bit of smoothing can help. So if we do this again, but we enter a much larger number, let's say something like uh, 21, trying to position these windows here. Okay. And we go to the same pixel. We zoom in to the peak. We see this is <laughs> very rounded and very smooth. So this is another way that you can smooth out your data without reducing the spectral resolution at all. So the last one we have in our list is the savitsky golay curve fitting. Now this is a commonly used spectral algorithm, spectral smoothing algorithm. Uh, this is the one that um, I would say is most used uh, because uh, you can Google or look up uh, the savitsky golay algorithm, and, and there's a lengthy explanation on Wikipedia on, on what it does, but it, it's a common spectral smoothing algorithm, so we put this in because a lot of people are are very familiar with this, and it's, you know, you can, there's lots of information on it. Uh, this does the same thing. It is very similar to the uh, moving average, the adjacent band averaging, except it applies a level of smoothing, and the level of smoothing is between one and four, one being the least amount of smoothing and four being the most amount of smoothing. The default is two. Um, and basically the difference is this, is when it gets to uh, an area that it has to average, it will apply an extra, an extra smoothing feature. I'm not quite sure exactly the mathematics behind this, but like I said, you can, you can look this up and uh, find an explanation for it on the web. So here, uh, again, it should be odd, like adjacent band averaging, there's a center band and then an equal number behind it. So if I type in three, like we did earlier, and I'll leave it at two is the default. Um, you can apply different degrees of smoothing and, and look at the data and see how big of a difference there is. Um, I actually haven't, haven't really explored that much. I know four shows a smoother curve than one, but to which degree I'm like I said, I'm not sure. So we just go to memory. And here it produces a, an image again. And we will again link, link these displays.
Okay, so we see that this one here, they actually uh, they look quite different. Um, the idea with the Savitsky Golay filter is, is you need to probably have a number above above three. Um, the number of bands that it's going to average, I'm going to run this again. I think with Savitsky Golay it actually has to be over three. So we'll say 11. So let me link these. It's going to drive me crazy if I don't change these to the same. Okay, there we go. Okay. So here we see something similar that we saw to adjacent band averaging. There's just some, some different math applied. And one of the things that you'll notice, and I'm not exactly sure what the explanation is for this, um, perhaps it's probably explained when you read up on the algorithm, but when you do do the smoothing, it does reduce the uh, intensity a little bit, and that shouldn't be uh, a problem whatsoever. Why would you want to do this smoothing? Uh, some people just like to have their data smoothed out uh, and averaged. Uh, some people say they want it to, to look like this, you know, this is a lot prettier plot than this, especially when you when you zoom in and, and this is smooth and, you know, this is the raw data, this is processed data. Um, some people actually will process all their data with smoothing and then do the uh, mapping, you know, using the spectral angle mapper. They'll create libraries from all this smooth, smooth data and uh, they like to work that way. Some people just choose to work with the raw data and so it's up to you to decide which is best. Um, I don't think there is a better way. If there is, uh, <laughs> please let me know. I'd like to know. But uh, when I've done smoothing on both of these, uh, you know, or when I've done spectral mapping on, on two processed and unprocessed files that are smooth, I, I really don't see any difference in the mapping. Um, some people might argue that, that the smooth data is going to be easier to map, it's going to be better. Some people would probably say that maybe this is more accurate because these little inconsistencies matter. Uh, but that's up to you to decide. Uh, typically, um, I don't use the smoothing algorithm that much, but it is a tool that's available if you need it. So anyway, that concludes the uh, tutorial here on the spectral smoothing. Thank you.